started. Got your Bibles, want to turn with me to the book of Revelations. We're going to read some scripture today in your hearing, and I want you to be much in prayer. God would help us today. I'm just excited about being at church. I'll be honest, I uh, started preaching maybe, uh, I woke up Saturday morning in the, sometime in the middle of the night preaching, and I'd preach a while and I'd fish a while, and you know how that goes. If you ever woke up in the middle of the night, you know, and just kind of got into something, you know what I mean. Well, I'd preach a while and I'd fish a while. And anyways, some of y'all are grinning at me and laughing, but um, I'm, I'm the uh, honest preacher. I just tell you the way it goes. So anyways, um, preached all night long last night. I got here this morning. I started preaching on the porch outside, and uh, Johnny Williams told me I better do a good job this morning that next Sunday was pastor election, so I appreciate all the good encouragement. Um, that he has offered to me today. Um, but anyways, um, really had this message on my heart burning. And so um, excited about preaching it today. Be a, a great uplift to every single one of us, I really feel like. So uh, anyways, you got your Bibles, 22nd chapter of the book of Revelations. I'm going to read just one verse of Scripture. And um, you be much in prayer. Revelations chapter 22 and verse 12 reads like this, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. And that's all I'm reading to you today. I want you to be much in prayer this morning that God um, would help us today. And uh, I'm going to do my best to preach a message about our reward this morning. And I want you to think about that. Um, for a few minutes. Um, I preached part of this message at a funeral um, for Melinda McMurray's dad, and I guess John's back there, and he, he probably remembers that. Maybe there might have been one or two of you all there, so just act surprised. But uh, God's gave me the rest of it, and I'll tell how that came about. Um, I, as a pastor, and, and you know, some of you all might can relate with me, there's a few preachers in the building, but um, sometimes we struggle to really get a message. And, you know, part of that, I think, is God's process of helping us grow um, and rely on Him. And also part of that's on our part because we don't um, take the time and we don't um, do the due diligence, if I can say it that way, I guess. But anyways, I had that funeral to preach and Melinda's dad had passed away and they had asked me to do that. And I was on my way and I had prayed for two or three days about that as much notice as I had. Um, that I was going to be doing the funeral. I'd prayed about that, and um, man, I, I came and come across the mountain and went down 11 and was going, and uh, I still didn't have anything. And I thought, Lord, what in the world? I got to do something here, God. You're going to have to help me. And I uh, got this message when I pulled in the parking lot down there. God began to just lay all this out in front of me, and I thought, my goodness, why, why could this not have happened two days ago? And I uh, could have been more prepared. But anyways, it happened for a reason like that. I preached the funeral message, and it went great. Um, and everyone, you know, I feel like was uplifted, and I was uplifted, and I made the comment that, man, I'd love to preach that message at my church. And so God's going to let me do that this morning. But God gave me the rest of the message since then. So uh, I want you to pray this morning. And before we get started, i got to take a little bit of inventory. How many people in the building this morning is saved? I want you to raise your hand. If you're saved, praise the Lord. Saved by God's marvelous grace. That means something today. Amen. Uh, to know that you're a child of God, Rick, means something today. To know that you belong to Him, I'll be honest, I'd rather be a child of God than the wealthiest man in this whole world. Because without God, he don't have nothing. And I'd, I'd rather have God than to have material things, to have this and to have all these things. I'd rather have God, Bobby, than I would have any of that. Because um, if we have God, we've got everything. If you're saved by God's marvelous grace, there's a reward coming to you. And I'm going to preach about that in just a minute. So um, a lot of people here today are going to be able to claim this reward I'm going to preach about. If you raised your hand, you said, you were saved, uh, then guess what? You're going to be able to claim the message today. And if you're here today and you couldn't raise your hand by the time I get done preaching today, I hope and pray it lights a fire in you and you say, you know what? I want what those people's got. And I want 
what that preacher's been preaching about. I want it in my life and I want to gain it and I want to be able to accept it and I, uh, I want to be able to claim that. So that's my prayer today. But anyways, everybody raise their hand. Now how many people right now, uh, just be honest with me, are going through a struggle or going through a trial or going through a hardship or going through a hard time? Uh, just three people in the whole building. My goodness gracious, I thought the message was going to be for everybody today. Let's all be honest. We all um, face struggles and we all face troubles and trials and I've uh, talked to some of you seniors which means boss if you're visiting I've talked to some of you all and uh, you've expressed to me as you get older it doesn't get any easier and I guess that's really the truth I guess there'll always be something but uh, what I want to preach about today and what I want you to think about today there is a reward for the people of God now uh, get with me and think about this for just a few minutes have you ever worked at something and just really worked at it and it was stressful and it um, was hard to do and you thought you know what is this really going to be worth it that's kind of where I'm at with my grass right now I keep working at it and keep working at it and I'll be honest I've got some doubt that I'm ever going to have a yard I'll just be honest but uh, I keep working at it and I keep I mean it's just stressful but anyways I uh, want you to know this today working towards this life and working through this future and dealing with the struggles and dealing with the strife and dealing with all all the everyday things of life is going to be worth it one day. Are you with me today? It's going to be worth it. Why? Because he said he was coming quickly and he said he was bringing our reward. It's going to be worth it. If you're a child of God today, I'm going to tell you it's worth fighting the fight and it's worth doing the duty and it's worth serving and it's worth believing and it's worth doing it today. Do you all with me today? Children of God, my people that are saved, God's people, are you with me today? It's worth it today. Well, preacher, I don't know if it is or not. There's a reward that God is going to bring with him. And you know what? It's going to be worth it one day after a while for me and you. We just got to keep the faith, don't we? We've got to keep the faith. We've got to stay on track. We've got to finish the course. Amen. There's a course of life that we're all going through. And Ed, uh, I've seen different people go through many different struggles. Financial struggles. Maybe family struggles. Maybe health struggles. Maybe, uh, you know, there's just a lot of different things that weight me and you down. But uh, the difference is there's going to be a reward for me and you that are saved. And I'm going to preach about that. There's a huge difference today between a gift and a reward. Would you agree with that? Now salvation in Jesus Christ was God's gift to this whole world. He gave His only begotten Son. Rick, Jesus died on the cross for everybody, for every man, woman, boy and girl, for every black, every white. Doesn't matter what race, doesn't matter where they come from. Christ gave His life and that was God's gift gift for all of mankind. Now the difference is a reward is something that's given that is earned. Now think about that if you miss. When you give someone a reward, it's something they earn. Right? I'm going to reward you for doing this or I'm going to reward you for doing that. God said that Jesus was going to come quickly and he was bringing a reward. There is a reward for serving God. Amen? There is. Well preacher, what about in this life? Now I'll be honest, I'm in no hurry to get there. God has bless me and I enjoy living. I've got all of you. I've got my family. I've got my all these different things but at times in life I get like Paul was. I get pressed beyond measure and I uh, the waves I think about Peter being out on the ocean and the waves look like they're so big Keith. I get to thinking about what's waiting on me on the other side and I want you to know this today for a child of God I've got more to gain than I'm going to leave right here. And when I leave this world it's going to be victory for me. When I leave this world, I've got a lot of things waiting on me on the other side. Can you say that today? Doesn't that make you feel good to know that, you know what, the Bible said, one of the writers said, for me to die would be gain. It would be gain. How can you say that, preacher? For you to leave this world, there would be people, there would be just a handful of people that would probably cry if something happened to me. Um, you could count them on one hand, but there would be just a few. Paxton would miss his dad. But uh, what about, how can you say it, Derek, that it would be gain for you to, because it would be glory for him, amen, for me to die would be be glory for Christ and for me to die and what's waiting on me my goodness I've got a home over there somewhere I've got an inheritance that is waiting on me think about it today folks if you're a child of God there's something great waiting for you on the other side 
Doesn't that make you happy today? Man, I tell you what, you all made it rough on me this morning, right? See, I'm having a hard time pumping them back up. Listen to me, for a child of God, oh my goodness, when I draw my last breath, the Bible said to be absent from the body would be present with the Lord. That means I've got a direct ticket, my friend, to the place, the heavenly world up there in the skies. I've got a direct ticket and I'm going to go there. What about you today? Think about this reward. He said, blessed are those that die in the Lord. Amen. That they could rest from their labors. Does that not sound good to you? That's going to be part of our reward, Christian people. We're going to get to rest one day after a while. Does that not make you feel good today? No, hey, I'm going to get to rest one day. You know what I mean. Kick back and rear back and rest. Well, what do you mean rest? I mean rest from all the struggles. I mean rest from all the trials. I mean rest. There ain't going to be no clocks up in heaven to punch. Are you with me? How many people's got to punch a clock? That ain't too good, is it? But listen to me. When we get to heaven, one day will be as a thousand years with the Lord. There will be no more troubles. There will be no trials. There will be no these things going on. We'll be present with our Savior. Don't that feel good to you? Man, our reward. Listen, you know what? I think about it. We're going to be rewarded for a few things. We're going to be rewarded, Johnny Williams, for believing. Amen. For believing what? For believing He's the Christ. For believing what? For believing He's the way. For believing He's the truth. And for believing He's the life. Amen. We're going to be rewarded for that one day. Now, I'm reaping benefits right now. I, I've seen people say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to enjoy my salvation. I've got news for you. I'm enjoying it on this side. Derek, wait, I'm enjoying God. And I'm enjoying Christ. And Bobby, I'm claiming His promises today. And I'm enjoying and living on this side what about you are you enjoying are you enjoying being a Christian right now oh preacher there ain't no joy none of this if you'll see the big picture there's joy today in serving the Lord we're going to be rewarded for serving him think about it today for sir what, what do you mean Derek are you trying to say that when we get to heaven there'll be a, something better uh, let me tell you something folks there won't be no shacks up in heaven amen there ain't going to be somebody got a big mansion over here and somebody got a little building over there it don't work that way amen we're going to be together and we're going to live in a mansion amen don't that say Sound good? There will be no big and no little when we get to heaven. Whoo! Ain't that good? Some of y'all. <sighs> Tell you what, John the Baptist would have struggled here today. Come on now. Think about it. Think about your reward that he's going to bring with him. Amen. He's got it for you. Do you believe that today? We're going to be rewarded for believing. We're going to be rewarded for suffering. Listen, if you're going to be a child of God, you'll have to suffer some things. Amen. That's absolutely correct. Paul suffered. Peter suffered. All the disciples, the apostles, they all had to suffer. We'll have to suffer. We're no better than they were. Christ had to suffer. We'll have to suffer. You know why? Because we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We will have to suffer some things as a child of God. You will have to suffer some things, but praise God, I'm persuaded. I know. Hallelujah. I'm 100%. Boom, shakalaka. We're going to be rewarded. What it for it one day, amen. It's going to happen. Ain't you glad? Amen. It'll be glory one day, Keith Rich. My goodness, just to hear him say, Well done, my faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Just to, my goodness. Now, did it not make you feel good to hear Dad say you've done a good job when you were going up? Didn't that make you, just to hear him say, You've done a good job, will be worth it all, won't it? Think about it today. Man. Don't that sound good? Our reward, our payment, whew, it's big, ain't it? I can tell by looking at some of you, you just can't grasp it. I'm like, whoa. You really think so, preacher? I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about it. We're going to have everlasting life. Amen? Everlasting. Think about everlasting life. What do you mean? That means we ain't going to die. Amen. 
Think about it. As we go through this life, we've buried a lot of people. I've buried a lot of saints of God. You've buried a lot of saints of God. And we've buried family members. But when we get to heaven, there's not one grave in all that fair land. Amen. There ain't no graveyards. Why? Because ever, <laughs> hallelujah, everlasting life. We will have that when we get to the heaven I'm preaching about today. Ooh, ain't that good? And what about a glorified body? Let me preach about that just a minute. Part of our reward, the Bible said, we're going to have a body like in the hills, a glorified body. Preacher, what are you trying to talk about about all that? I'm talking about a body that doesn't sin. I'm talking a body about a body there is no guile. I'm talking about a perfect being. We're going to have that, Keith Rich. Amen. One that doesn't wear out. One that doesn't decay. One that's everlasting. Amen. And that's what our reward's going to be one day, my friend. Don't that make you feel good about who you are? Huh? Our dividend, our reward, our payment, he's bringing with him. Amen? Do you want part of it? I want it. How about you? Grover, I want to go somewhere. Well, there ain't none of this stuff. Amen. How many people, you ever turned the news on lately and seen all the things that are going on? And Rick, you've been to Haiti. You know about those kids that don't have nothing. And you know about those people and how they're struggling. Just, whoa, when, they, when children of God get to heaven, listen to me, there won't be no empty bellies. And there won't be nobody hungry. And God, help me, just there'll be peace and there'll be joy. And guess what? The Bible says that the lion will lay with the lamb. Amen. There's going to be peace in this place I'm preaching about. Amen. You know why there's going to be peace? Because we're going to be present with Christ. How many people would just like to be able to thank Christ for what He's done for you in your life? Amen. Me, both hands, winner, winner, all three. I'd like to be able to thank Him. Praise God. One day I'm going to be able to say, Thank you, Lord, for what you done for me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for putting food on my table. Thank you for my friend. God, whoa, ain't it good? One day I'm going to be present with Him, and that'll be my reward. Won't that be good? Just a bow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just a bow. Amen. Oh, some of you people will make sure what you've got. You're too sold up today. Amen. A message like this today and you leave here the frown on you better get Jesus. He'll make you smile today. Amen. Man, that just about just exploded me inside. We'll talk about how many people enjoy going on vacation. I'll tell you what, you'll be fired up about that for six months before it gets there. You know what I mean? Counting down the days. I'm preaching to you, you're going to go on an eternal vacation one day. Amen. You can't get happy about it. Woo, listen to me. We got a reward coming to us one day. It's going to be worth it. Amen. It's going to be worth it. He said, Behold, I'm going to come quickly. Man, I've got treasure up in heaven. What about you? Anybody got any treasure? Preacher, I'm just as poor as I can be. I'll get on that boat with you. You know what I mean? We ain't none of us, but listen to me, we ain't never going to have nothing in this life. You know why? Because I'm not staying here. This ain't mine. None of this stuff, it, it ain't mine. I'm borrowing it. But let me tell you something I've got a clear title on. I have got, my God. Goodness, listen, I've learned this through life. You're going to owe for something as long as you're breathing pretty much. You know what? You're either going to owe something you've got or you're going to owe Uncle Sam. That's just the way it works. Amen. Everybody in the building smile at me real big. You're in debt. Amen. Listen to me. Well, I've got one thing. Praise God. I've got a clear title to a mansion. Amen. I've got a clear title to heaven and that reward that's awaiting on me. What about you? Preacher, you're all fired up. Man, why wouldn't you be? When we get to heaven, can you imagine? There's going to be singing, and there's going to be praising. Um, we're going to get in a big service that ain't never going to end. And you know what the good part is? A lot of you Baptists won't care, amen? You ain't going to care that it ain't going to come to an end. Why? Because we're finally going to be present. Listen to me. One of these days, I'm going to be a king. Are you with me? 
Amen. I'm going to reign. Amen. With Christ. I'm going to have a robe and I'm going to have a crown. Guess what that means? That means I'm a king. Amen. That's what the Bible says about it. We're going to reign with him. Amen. Goodness, goodness, goodness. There's a piece of heaven coming to Bean Station today. Do you feel that? I mean that, my goodness, that reward I'm preaching about today. If you ain't saved today, you ought to run to this altar. Say, I want it, preacher. I want it. All you got to do is come. He'll give you that. Amen. It won't cost you a thing today. All you got to do is believe who he is. Believe what he done. There's a reward coming. Listen to me. When we get to heaven, all the blind people are going to see. Amen. That's exactly right. Oh, listen. When I get to heaven, when you get to heaven, I'm not going to be worried about this belly sticking out right here. Amen. And I'm going to have hair in places. you got to help me. It won't matter. Amen. That's right. It ain't going to matter. I'm losing it. And you all are the cause of it. But listen to me. When we get to heaven, none of that stuff ain't going to, there ain't going to be no trying to fit in no more, amen. Oh, listen, when I get to heaven, part of my reward is going to be no more preaching, amen. I won't have to preach another message. You know why? They won't be no need of it when we get there. We'll be with the Word when we get there. Amen. Our reward, I want it. How about you? Derek, you went crazy today. Hallelujah. Feels good, don't it? To know what we've got and to know what we're going to get. Keith, it means something today. Keith Rich, when you leave, my goodness, when you leave this world, just leave that cane here. You're not going to need it. Amen. Don't that feel good? Just leave it, Keith. You ain't going to need it. <laughs> Woo, one of these days when I get to stay in, I don't know, maybe I get to your funeral, maybe I don't. I'm going to say it anyway. Listen, you might outlive me, but if I do, get my Bible and keep it here. I won't need it. But one of these days I'll rejoice because I'll know you don't need that where you're at. Amen. Folks, this is good. We've got a reward. All the infirmities grow over. All the hardships, all the hard days that me and you have are going to be over, Bobby. All, how many people would like to wake up tomorrow and not have to worry? Amen. Not to worry about your kids, your, your grandkids, about what they're doing, where they're at, where they've been. Oh, my goodness. I'd like to wake up tomorrow. One day I wake up and there'll be no more worrying. Amen. It's going to happen. It's part of that reward we're going to get. <laughs> Man, I like to just go today, wouldn't you? Let's just all go together. You know what I mean? Woo. Out of here. Oh. My reward is with me. Listen, we get to heaven, I can't read long enough. These things just keep on to come. This right here is real today. This is a piece of coming. Not only are we going to rest, guess what? There ain't going to be no sin in this place I'm preaching about. You with me? How many people does it turn your stomach when you turn the news on and see about children being neglected, child abuse, and all? Does that not just make you sick to think about all the, When we get to heaven, guess what? The news station ain't going to be in business up there. You know why? There ain't going to be nothing for them to report. Hallelujah! There ain't going to be no more sin. Don't that sound good to you? I ain't going to be preaching about sin. They ain't going to be talking about sin. Some of y'all ain't going to have nothing to talk about because all you want to talk about is everything bad going on. You're going to just have to keep your mouth shut up there. Why? Because there ain't going to be nothing bad to talk about. Hallelujah! Because the sin will not be there when we get there. I like it, don't you? Preachers are without a job. <laughs> ain't got nobody lost to preach to and ain't nobody sinning. That means I'm done. Amen? Amen? There's a reward for the people of God. Everybody here ought to be. <laughs> Man, if I couldn't get excited today, I see some people crying in the congregation today. When we get to heaven, there'll be no more tears. Amen? There'll be no more sorrow, and there'll be no more pain. Does that not sound good to you? Have you ever seen anybody have to suffer? I've, been, I've seen loved ones, Bobby, have to suffer. 
And you know what? One day I'm sure I'm going to suffer. Why? Because of all my sin. I'll have to be... Oh, my goodness, when we get to heaven, this me, there ain't going to be no hearse, there ain't going to be no ambulances, and there ain't going to be no cops. Big John, you're without a job. It's going to happen. Listen to me. There ain't going to be no need for none of this stuff. Amen, 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 amen. No need for it. Why? Because the former things have all passed away. You with me? Man, I'm preaching right in the depths of the Bible today, ain't I? I think I knew what John saw part of it. He said all the former things were going to pass away. Have you ever liked to say goodbye? <clears throat> just when I leave here on Sundays, right? I know that's what some of you are thinking. <clears throat> when I go through the vest, when you shake my hand, it's goodbye. When we get to heaven, there'll be no more goodbyes. Amen. No more, Keith. And you know what? Believe it or not, everybody up there is going to be agreeing. Huh? Huh? Are you sure? Everybody's going to agree. Absolutely. The Baptists, the Methodists, amen, the Baptist Jews, amen, the black, the white, the big, we're all going to agree. Why? Because we're going to be focused on Him and on who He is, on what He is, and we're going to be giving praise to Him in that city. Amen. I'm getting closed up, I promise. All the former things are gone. That means electric bill. Huh? How many people? Yeah, man, preacher. How many people can relate with me? That means all the insurance. I'm going to break it right on down where you can understand it. How many people think the insurance costs too much? Guess what? That's one of them former things. When we get to heaven, all that's gone, McCubbins. It's gone. Preacher, how's it gone? Because we ain't going to be sick and we ain't going to be driving and we ain't going to be living. Well, golly, we ain't going to need none of that stuff. We sure ain't going to need no fire policy. Why? Because we're going to be in heaven. Hallelujah. Ain't that good? Don't need no electricity because the Bible said in that city, he's the light. Amen. Have you ever thought about how bright this is going to be? I'm preaching about your people's reward. How I many of y'all got people done already experiencing? I'm going to raise my hand. Amen. I've got some treasure up there. Huh? I've got people that invested in me. I'm coming to a close. Get you a song ready. I've got people that put time and effort in me that are there. Amen. You can relate with me, can't you, old boy? They're there. Have you ever found yourself weeping for loved ones that have gone on to the other side? Uh, have you ever found yourself weeping for them? Oh, there's a song that says, Weep not, friends, for I'm going there. Amen. If you could see, I'll preach it out, you're going to make us cry. Huh? Every time I get to thinking about them men of God, see, I didn't just snap my fingers and make all this happen. There's been people put a lot into me. I had a grandfather that pastored for over 50 years. And guess what? I was privileged, Keith, to sit under him. Honey, he mentored me and he helped me. And he taught me the Word of God. And listen, I, I can still see him now down there at the hospital right before he drawed his last breath. He said, Derek, he said, don't you cry for me. He said, I'm going to go get my reward. Amen. Listen to me. Don't weep and don't cry for people that go on. We, we miss them, don't we? But for a child of God, hallelujah. Everybody stand up. I'm going to hush in a minute. Probably not, but I'm going to try. Listen to me. If something happens today or going across Clinch Mountain, and I get on the other side and I don't ever make it back to this side, don't you cry tear for me. To say the last time I heard him, he was preaching about his reward. Are you with me today? Are you saved? For you to die, my, does that not mean something to have the victory? Rick, I'm, you know I hate getting beat, don't I? I hate it. Is it your pride, preacher? I don't know what it is. I think it's something God puts in a man. Some people just hate to get beat. But as long as I'm on this side, I'm going to lose every now and then. But when I get to that side, Boggs, there'll be a bite ever cast. Huh? Preacher, you going to fish up there? No, I ain't going to fish up there. What I'm telling you, there'll be something to fill me up there. Amen? Take your fishing pole if you want to. You ain't going to need it. 
we get to heaven, folks, all we're going to, my goodness, we're going to be praising the Lord. Ain't that good? You can't take. I'm going to end like this. No wonder he said, lay your treasures up in heaven. You can't take none of this junk down here with you. You try, what, junk? The house you live in will be somebody else's. The boat sitting in my garage that I think so pretty will belong to somebody else. Five years from now, probably. The vehicles, you ever got a new car? Huh? Oh my gosh, Almighty, that's the best thing there is. I love it. Four years from now, it'll be somebody else's. Five years. Can't take none of this stuff with us. We ain't going to need it. Are you with me? Where we're going, we ain't going to need it. Now, if you're here today and you don't find no excitement in my message today, I'd like to invite you to this altar. This right here would have woke up somebody that's about dead. Huh? Not because I preached it, but because it was straight from God. I don't care how backslid you get, or how cold you get, and how indifferent you get, how far you stray. If you're a child of God and you think about what's going to be yours one day, it will fire you up. Amen. If this right here don't make you burn, you've got wet wood. Amen. There's a reward. He's bringing it with him. Are you going with us is my question. If you're here today and you need to come, I'd like to invite you while we sing.